everyone, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the top 10 arguments against veganism, some of which I used as excuses before I went vegan. And basically, I'm going to be explaining to you why they are not relevant, don't matter, and why they're just wrong. So there are like hundreds of arguments against veganism, but I came up with the 10 that I hear the most often, that I see the most online, and I'm just gonna explain them to you. So the first one I just, I needed to put first because this is what I hear so much, is that I respect your choice, so you should respect mine. So to put it simply, it is not a choice because your choice has a victim and mine doesn't. You are choosing to do something that causes pain to another individual. And although, yes, it is a choice, technically every single thing you ever do is a choice, but that does not make it moral, that does not make it right, that does not mean that I have to respect you for doing so. For a little extreme example, somebody's choice could be to shoot up a school, and yes, it is their choice, and it may be my choice to not do that, but that does not mean that I have to respect them for it, and I would assume that most people in this world would not respect somebody who did that because of the fact that they are not just affecting themselves, they are affecting other people and other living beings in a negative way and causing pain towards them, which is the same thing you're doing to animals when you eat meat and dairy and contribute to those corporations. The second argument I hear a lot is that it is somebody's culture. A lot of people say, in my culture, we eat these foods and it's just cultural, so I have to continue doing it. One, just because something's cultural does not make it moral. For example, in a lot of cultures, women have no rights or less rights than they should. They are not equal. That's traditional, that's cultural, but does it make it right? No. Another thing is the Yulin Dog Meat Festival in China. Um, a lot of people in the US or in Europe think that that is immoral, but it is traditional and cultural to that country. But just because it's cultural does not make it right. And also, little thing I wanna throw in there about that, you can still eat all the foods of your culture in a vegan version. There are literally replacements for everything now, and it's just gonna get increasingly better as time goes on and the years go on. So you can, you don't have to like give up your food and give up taste and things like that by going vegan. Number three is that we have canines, so that means that we have to eat meat. We are meant to, we're built to do that. That's just not right. It's, you're incorrect. If you actually look at our canines, one, they are not sharp at all. We have flat grinding teeth, which is the same as almost all herbivores. Just from looking at it like that, we are not meant to eat meat. Another thing to think about is if we were meant to eat animal products, we would be able to naturally kill an animal with no weapons other than our own body and our own mouths. We cannot do that. We cannot go up to a cow and physically fight it and kill it with just our mouths. We have to use knives and guns and things like that. If you think about any other animal in the wild, they naturally can kill other animals and that's why they are meant to eat other animals. Also, just because we may have canines, that does not mean we're meant to eat meat. For example, the animal with the longest canines is a hippo, which is an herbivore. Some other examples of animals that are herbivores that also have large canines are gorillas, the saber-toothed deer, and a camel. So just because we have canines don't mean we need to eat meat. Number four is that we don't have enough space to grow all the plants we would need if everyone in the world went vegan. Um, just a fact, eating meat takes more plants than veganism does. That's because most of grains and vegetables grown are used to feed livestock that you in turn consume, which means that if we eliminated that, that we'd only have to grow the plants for people to eat and people eat a lot less plants than mass amounts of animals in animal agriculture eat. Some quick little percentages for you. 70% of grain in the US is used to feed animals. 36% of corn is used to feed livestock. And 75% of soybeans are used to feed livestock. And just letting you guys know, I will link all the sources I used down in the description so you can make sure what I'm saying is valid and a good resource. So bottom line is we could grow less crops than we're growing now if we all went vegan because we wouldn't have to feed animals. Number five is that 
veganism is way too expensive. Um, so with any diet, you can make it as expensive or as cheap as you want it to be, basically. And veganism is can literally be the cheapest thing you can do. It can also be very expensive if you buy luxury items and meat alternatives and things like that. Yeah, the fake meats and fake cheeses are very expensive. But if you focus on whole foods, which is the healthiest for you anyway, then you don't really have to worry about price. Buy what's in season for fruits and vegetables. If you think about it, grains, beans, nuts are a lot less expensive than actual meat and dairy that you'd buy. Number six is that animals eat other animals, so we should too, because technically we're animals. So one, why are we trying to compare ourselves to animals and trying to act like we're exactly like them when we as humans like to consider ourselves way more super superior <clears throat> that was annoying okay we like to consider ourselves way more superior to animals in every single other way literally think of anything that an animal does no human wants to be like that so why are we trying to make that excuse as like oh we're animals so we have to do this if we had that mindset and actually followed through with it in other daily activities besides eating food, we would be doing a lot of very instinctual, what we would consider crazy things because we don't act like animals. That's the first thing. Why are we comparing ourselves to animals and wanting to be like them? That's just weird because we don't do that for any other thing. Also, other animals don't have the same mental capacity as us. so humans have the ability to know right from wrong and have a moral standard in their mind. Other animals don't have morals. They are just going with their instincts. They don't ever lead with logic. Humans have the ability to do that. So if we have the capacity to know right from wrong and have the choice whether to do something that's right or wrong, moral or immoral, we need to follow that and actually do what's right. Other animals don't have that ability, so we can't really blame them for doing crazy things sometimes, but humans do, so yeah. Number seven is that humans are more intelligent than animals, and so we should value animals as less than humans and not really care as much about their lives. So with I just don't see the logic behind that because even in the human world, there are some humans that are more intelligent than other humans or like an adult is more intelligent than an infant. But just because somebody is less intelligent does not make their life not valid enough to live happily and to live a long life. You know, we think it's very immoral for somebody to kill a baby just because they're less intelligent than them. So there's no logic behind thinking an animal is less intelligent, they're for they don't deserve a life. Number eight is the idea of humane slaughter. So I've known a lot of meat eaters that maybe don't agree with the way big corporations are handling animal agriculture and killing animals, but they think that it is okay if they were a small farmer and they give their pigs a long happy life and give them a lot of love and then kill them very fast not torture them, you know, just shoot a bullet through their head real quick. And that means that it was humanely slaughtered and that the pig had a happy life. So what's wrong with that? Killing something that does not want to die and is not choosing that, there's nothing humane about that. There's no way to humanely kill something that does not want to die and does not deserve to die. So number nine is that animals will take over and overpopulate this world if everybody went vegan. Farmers only breed what they can sell. You know, the world's not gonna go vegan overnight. It's not gonna be a switch in the next week. It's gonna be a gradual increase of the number of vegans. And so the demand for meat and dairy is gonna decrease, which means that farmers will start to breed less and less animals into those industries. So by the time the world went vegan, if that happens, there's not gonna be enough animals to take over and overpopulate because they will not be breeded into existence anymore. It will just be the natural reproduction of animals in the wild, which is way less than what farmers do to breed those animals. So number 10 is that meat and dairy is healthy for us and we need it to have a well-balanced diet and to be healthy humans. So I'm just gonna share with you a lot of the I think biggest facts that people need to know about meat and dairy. Processed meat is actually a group one carcinogen, which is the same classification as cigarettes. 
and we all know cigarettes are not the best for our health, meat is one of the highest sources of cholesterol and saturated fat, which gives you a high risk of heart disease and diabetes, whereas a vegan diet does not, especially a whole food vegan diet, as long as you're not adding fake processed stuff into your diet, you're not adding a ton of salt and sugar, if you're eating whole natural foods, you're not gonna have those same problems that somebody that eats meat does, even if they eat a healthy meat diet. Another thing I found which was interesting because a lot of people think that chicken is better for you than beef. Um, it's not. Chicken actually has arsenic in it, which can cause cancer and is four times more toxic than mercury. Also, 50 grams of meat a day increases your cancer risk by 18%. 50 grams of meat is not a lot. It is a couple slices of bacon, a little tiny bit of chicken breast, like little amounts, something you would eat in one single meal. That increases your cancer risk by 18%. So why, why eat it? You know, that's, it's just, it's not good for you. Also, although dairy has been said to help make your bones stronger, it's actually been proven that the higher amounts of dairy you consume every day increases your risk of hip fractures and osteoporosis. So companies are lying to you. Spoiler. Another thing I want to mention as the last little fact of this video is the vital nutrients that people always say are missing in a vegan diet um, and even if people know that meat and dairy is not necessarily great for you they want to argue that they have certain nutrients in them that vegans cannot get so the main one people talk about is the vitamin b12 so any of these vitamins i'm mentioning you can always take supplements for so b12 can also be found in fortified soy and nutritional yeast. Iron can be found in leafy greens and dried beans. Calcium is found in a lot of greens, tofu, and tahini. Omega-3s are in flax seeds, soy, hemp seeds, walnuts, and zinc is in whole grains and legumes. So that is the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I hope you guys learned something. I hope this encouraged you to maybe learn a little bit more about veganism or switch some things around that you're eating um, into a more plant-based diet. So thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.